like many of you, I use a compressor in my garage, airbrushing, filling tires and things like that. My old one recently broke, so I've upgraded it to a slightly larger model in order to run some air tools off it. So we've got an impact wrench there, things like a orbital sander um, and whatever else I can find. I've picked up a few tips for setting up the compressor along with the hoses and the pipework and things like that to properly use the tools. So I thought I'd share a couple of those tips with you and hopefully they'll help. So my unit is a three horsepower, which equates to about 14 and a half CFM, and it's got a 50 liter reservoir. So it's not the smallest compressor you can get for home use, but it's a fairly typical one. It fits just underneath my workbench, so it suits my purpose. It's not an oil-free one, so it is an oil one, and I need to do an oil change shortly on it. And to route the pipework, I've got this manifold here with a just a tank pressure gauge. This is a filter regulator and then I've got a couple of hoses which we'll come on to later and one of those hoses goes on to this reel but before we go on to that I'm just going to go over to the whiteboard darts game off to explain this next bit it's easier if I can draw a picture while I'm talking so you've got your compressor there goes up to your reservoir you've then got a pipe and then on the end you've got your tool So on the tank you've got a pressure gauge and let's say hypothetically you've got a pressure gauge here at the tool. So if you haven't got one already you are going to need a pressure gauge at the tool end on the end of your hose. If you check this video here I'll show you how to make one just like this. This will be a lot cheaper than the cheap nasty ones you can get off eBay and also be a lot better because the pipe's bigger and you'll get more flow through it and we'll come on to why that's important in a minute. Most tools tell you to set the pressure to 90 psi. Most compressors run at higher than 90 psi. Generally speaking, you're going to have a regulator here, which you can set this pressure to. So your tank might be 140 psi, but here you're setting it to 90 psi. While your tool is turned off, not doing anything, this pressure gauge here is also going to read 90 psi, because why wouldn't it? The pressure is going to be equal all the way along this pipe, and there's going to be no reason for that to drop. Once you turn the tool on, all of a sudden you're going to essentially be opening up this end and causing compressed air to flow through this pipework. This pressure here is going to drop and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is because when flow increases, pressure decreases. So your total pressure equals your static pressure plus half density velocity squared plus density gravity change in height. So this is called Bernoulli's equation, and the idea of it is this is constant along any streamline. It's not an ideal equation for this because this is compressible flow for start, and this is made for incompressible flow. It's also not a fully closed system, so heat can get in and out of this pipe. But just as a general idea, um, from here to here, when there's no flow whatsoever, velocity is going to be zero, therefore that whole thing is going to be zero, and there's no change in height, therefore the total pressure is equal to your static pressure. Once flow starts, this section, the gravitational potential energy doesn't change, but this kinetic energy will suddenly have a value which isn't zero. This in an ideal world will stay the same, this total pressure, which means your static pressure will go down. So that's one reason why the pressure goes down. All the way along this line, as the air is flowing, there's actually friction on the pipe walls which causes the pressure to drop. Don't worry too much about those reasons. If you want to do more accurate calculations, take a look at the Navier-Stokes equations. I can't be bothered to write them out here and I can't remember them from the top of my head and I don't understand them anyway. And if you can fully solve them you'll get about a million dollars in prize fund. I can't remember what the prize fund is called but um, fill your boots with that. But otherwise we're just going to generalise here. If this is your distance along the pipeline and this is your pressure along the pipeline. If we've got 90 psi here at the outlet of the regulating valve, that's going to slowly decrease all the way along. So here you might only have 70 psi, which isn't very good. So in order to get your 90 psi, you're going to need the outlet pressure to be higher in order to get 90 psi at the tool. Final thing to mention is if you've got restrictions along this line, and that restriction could be a smaller fitting or a coupling, a crimped bit of pipework, a regulating valve or a filter. Let's say we've got a filter in there. That will also cause a pressure drop 
So you'd start at 90 psi, then when it goes through the filter, it would drop even more and then carry on down. So it might end up at 50 psi. So with that in mind, I have two main tips. Number one, first tip is to set the dynamic pressure of the tool. I don't know if that's the official term for it, but it's what I call it because essentially you're setting the pressure of the tool while it's operating. So first we'll try the impact wrench. So we'll get the pressure measuring tool on the end. And I've got two different lines here. Uh, this one's about four meters long, three eighths of an inch bore. And this one's about 15, 16 meters long. Again, three eighths of an inch bore. Ninety bar at the tool, static pressure. So at ninety psi static pressure, and that dropped down to about sixty psi on the four meter hose. We've got this set to about one hundred and twenty five psi now, and when you blast it, you're getting down to about ninety psi. Reduce restrictions along the whole line. And there's a few ways to do that. Minimize your hose length. Remember, the longer the hose, the more friction we've got and the more losses we have. So now on the 16 meter hose, you can see again, it's got 90 bar. So with the longer hose, you could see that then drop down to about 50 psi. Again, not a massive difference, but it does show that you should really be setting your tools based on your individual setup. And if you've got multiple ones, you should keep one of these gauges handy. The second way to minimize restrictions, use large bore pipe. Use the largest bore pipe that you can get. I've got 10 millimeter or 3 eighths of an inch pipe work for my tool use. If I'm using an airbrush or something like that, I'll use quarter of an inch or even eighth of an inch line because that doesn't need a very high pressure tool. And it does make it a lot lighter, more flexible and easier to maneuver the tool. See, the bigger the line, the heavier it's gonna be dragging that around. It's a bit of a pain, but it's worth it if the tool works better. Use as short of hoses as possible, but still allow yourself to use the tool safely and use a larger bore pipe. So just to really show the difference, I've now connected it up to this quarter inch hose. This one's significantly shorter than the three eighths of an inch hose, but you can see the size difference there. So this is probably only about two meters long. Again, 90 PSI. And you're literally working at about 20 PSI once it goes through this hose. Next way. Avoid quick couplings if possible. Generally speaking, they're all gonna cause some sort of a restriction. Remember here, when we had a restriction, that's a sudden pressure drop. But if you are gonna use them, which most people do, including myself, because I'm not gonna be screwing a tool onto the end every single time. And even on the compressor outlet, I tend to use quick couplings because they'll isolate and I can take a line off easily. If you're gonna do that, use high flow ones. So a lot of my tools have been delivered with some sort of a quick coupling attached to it or inside the box. I'd recommend just throwing these away unless they're exactly what you want. You need to select a system to use anyway. I'd avoid having two different systems for obvious reasons. I tend to use these Euro style couplings. They're a little bit shorter and they seem to be quite standard as well. Whereas you get the very long, I'm not sure what they're called, but you get quite long couplings, which is a little bit annoying when you're trying to store it inside a box or whatever. So anyway, I use the Euro couplings and I tend to use these PCL quick flow, or they're called XF PCL Euro XF couplings. And these will actually fit into a lot of the sort of freebie connectors that I get delivered with the tools. But when you look down the bore of the line, it's hard to show on the camera, but you can see how much bigger it is and also how much higher quality it is. So if you have a look at this, you can see it's nice, round, well machined. Whereas this one, you can see it's all like rough around the edges and, and just generally quite a poor quality control. And also for the female end of it, I had some trouble with the cheaper ones of these. So this one in particular is gonna go in the bin after I finish this video. When I've been disconnecting that from the tool, this hasn't isolated off properly and all of the air has just depressurized straight out, which is, Really annoying because you have to repressurize the compressor. It's really loud, so it does your ears in and it costs a lot of energy. And in the worst case, you could have a flailing lead which could hit you in the eye or whatever. So 
So um, all in all, I wouldn't use cheap couplings. It will cost you a few quid to upgrade your full system, but it's well worth it. And like I said, you want to minimize these anyway to avoid using too many quick couplings. Final tip is to use quality regulators and valves. If you're making a manifold or anything, always look for a full bore valve. And you can see that very obviously, I'll generally use quarter turn valves. And when you open them, you can see straight through the pipework and you can see that it's full bore and it's not gonna have a restriction. Same on your regulators and your filters. If you get ones which are very small, for example, this water trap, it's probably not gonna have a particularly high flow. Same with the regulator, which is built into the compressor itself. Generally speaking, they're not particularly high quality. They'll be quite restrictive, and I find they can't seem to maintain the same levels of flow as if you buy a quality one. So a decent filter regulator can be quite expensive. You want to have a filter anyway, because that will protect your tools. For example, last weekend I did quite a lot of sanding using an air sander, and my filter regulator did fill up, literally fill up with water. And if I didn't have that there, all of that water would be going through the mechanism of the tool. Another advantage is that you can, you can set the pressure much much better, much more finely. The built-in one doesn't do that very well at all. And also it should allow a much higher flow. When you're buying that compressor, if you're making a manifold or you're fitting it onto the compressor itself, you can either check the flow volume, the rated flow volume of, of the regulator. But otherwise, if you look for the ones with the larger bore, like if you get a half inch bore or a three eighths bore rather than a quarter inch bore, generally speaking, that's gonna be able to allow more air to go through it. So after I applied these tips, I found my tools were running much better and also my compressor was a lot more capable than some online reviews and people would say. For example, here in the UK, it's not typical for us to have very, very large workshops and things, unlike perhaps in America, where people often get the upright compressors with one inch outlets and stuff. So mine's rated at 14 and a half CFM, which will generally be okay for a medium tool. If you try and use things like um, cut off tools and angle grinders and stuff like that, you will have to wait for the compressor to catch up a little bit. Obviously buying a bigger compressor can be an easier option and you'll often see people recommending that as soon as they see an air tool not working they'll say you need a bigger compressor. Sometimes that's true, however, if you've set your regulator to whatever you've set it to and your tank pressure is higher than that and your tool still isn't running well, that isn't a problem with the compressor because that tank is still feeding air. It might run out a little bit quicker but while that's feeding pressure here that means your problem is downstream of the compressor itself. If you're finding that you're running it and this is empty and quicker than it's filling up, that means your compressor isn't big enough and you need a bigger pump which is actually filling up this tank or you need an accumulator or you need to just use your tool a little bit slower. So there you have it. Make yourself one of those, treat yourself and um, have fun with the air tools. <laughs>